How's everyone doing? Today I'll be doing a reviews and recommendation video where I review four movies and give recommendations for them. And if you've seen any of these movies, definitely let me know what you think of them and let me know which one of these is your favorite. Leave me those comments down below. And first up is Land. And this stars Robin Wright. And this is her feature length film directorial debut. And she did an amazing job here. I can't wait to see what she does in the future directing wise. And to me, this is an incredible performance from her. She should have been at least nominated uh, for the Academy Awards for her performance. Um, it just blew me away. And Robin Wright was nominated for Best Actress for the AARP Movies for Grown Ups Awards. And Damien Bashir actually won for Best Supporting Actor for the AARP Movies for Grown Ups Awards. Congratulations to Damien Bashir for winning the AARP Movies for Grown Up Award for Best Supporting Actor. Uh, it's nice to see them getting some recognition, even if they didn't get it from the Academy, uh, the Oscars. But uh, there's some, uh, you know, award ceremonies out there that do appreciate uh, their performances in this movie overall. And uh, deservedly so. I definitely think it deserved way more recognition this year. And again, I think this was uh, such an incredible performance from her. Great directorial debut. Uh, the cinematography was incredible. The establishing shots as well. Uh, she decides after a traumatic event in her life uh, to you know, move into the wilderness to be away from people. And you can figure out pretty quickly what happened uh, you know, with the tragic event, but you don't find out the full uh, details until the end of the movie, which when I heard that, I was actually shocked. But I also feel like it's relevant, sadly, uh, to you know, times today and uh, you know, what happened with her and uh, the family. And in the beginning, she's, you know, trying to see a therapist. She's talking to a friend and she decides to just leave that all behind and get away from the world. She dumps her cell phone, you know, gets supplies and actually gets rid of her truck as well. So she's stuck in this cabin in the woods in the middle of nowhere, uh, very remote. And she's going through really inclement weather and, you know, trying to survive uh, in the mountains, trying to hunt and garden and everything's going wrong. She's never done anything like this before. And uh, she's facing a really harsh winter. Uh, there's a bear as well that tears up a lot of her supplies. And she's essentially close to dying when uh, Damien Bashir, a local hunter, uh, comes across her and essentially saves her life. Damien Bashir, uh, excellent uh, actor. Uh, I always think of him from The Hateful Eight, but he's been in a ton of things. And Robin Wright, she's been an amazing actress for a long time. I always think of her as Gen A. And then also in uh, Princess Bride. Let me know your favorite Robin Wright movie. Uh, so Damien Bashir comes upon her, essentially, you know, saves her and then, you know, teaches her the ways of hunting and surviving off the land. It's supposed to be in Wyoming. That's what they say in the movie, but the film was actually shot in Canada. Uh, a lot of films are shot in Canada for the wilderness and things like that. And I think it works well. Um, and yeah, again, you see the harsh elements, the changing of the seasons. And they actually talk about that in the special features that, you know, they were living in those elements and how, you know, in a day it could be like 70 and then drop 30 degrees. One day they had four feet of snow. They had to shovel out and, you know, try to film. And, uh, I thought that was really interesting. Uh, good bonus features on here too. Uh, Robin Wright feature film directorial debut after the trauma, you know, crafting, uh, you know, the kind of like the making of as well. Um, and, you know, just going in depth about the filming process, which I thought was interesting. Uh, but yeah, so again, one of the things I really appreciate about this film is the fact that they don't overdo it with their relationship. With Damien Bashir, you find out he has his uh, own demons that he's struggling with and, you know, trying to give his life meaning again uh, by helping her. And uh, I really like the relationship, but I appreciate that they don't make it into a romantic uh, relationship and they don't, you know, overdo it. It's not too heavy handed. But, uh, you know, she wanted to be alone. At first, she's very standoffish and, you know, they develop a bond and she like looks forward to seeing him. Uh, he comes and visits uh, her cabin and he has a dog right there as well. I thought it was a very moving film dealing with, you know, trauma and loss and uh, kind of rediscovery too and grieving and just trying to, uh, you know, live again. Uh, this takes place over the span of two years uh, in this cabin. Uh, in the woods right here. And again, just tremendous performance from Robin Wright. Great uh, directorial debut here too from her feature length. And uh, I absolutely loved it. The cinematography, just stunning. Um, this is one of my favorite movies of the year. Uh, Land, not to be confused with Nomad Land. And also, you know, Greenland came out uh, recently too. A lot of films with the word land in the title. Uh, but yeah, absolutely love this one. She should have been nominated for Best Actress. 
Next up, another uh, Best Actress uh, nominee right here is uh, Promising Young Woman and starring Carrie Mulligan. Uh, she is an excellent actress. I really enjoyed her in Drive, uh, Shame, and Education. Uh, let me know your favorite Carrie Mulligan movie. I personally think she should have won for Best Actress. Uh, she lost to Frances McDormand for her performance in Nomadland. Uh, but this one to me is... There's some things where you have to suspend disbelief, but for me, it's one of those movies that I think every person should watch, especially every like teenager and person in their 20s, uh, man and woman. Uh, but to me, this is a powerful film. Um, again, there's certain aspects where you have to kind of suspend the disbelief, especially, you know, she looks like she's about 100 pounds soaking wet. Uh, even with the tire iron, I don't feel like she would scare off a lot of guys. Uh, but essentially, she's uh, this promising young woman. She was going to medical school and then a traumatic event happens where her friend was assaulted and then all the repercussions that came from that uh, and uh, it just changed her life and where she lives this double life where she's working now at like a coffee shop and then at night she'll go out to clubs and bars and pretend to be wasted uh, to see what guys will try to take advantage of her and she goes back to their place usually and, uh, you know, it plays out uh, one of two ways. You can tell by her notebook. That was one thing that I thought was interesting. There's clearly things that happen that aren't shown, uh, especially with uh, the notebook, with the some are in red and some are not. And I feel like that uh, has some implications there. The retaliation is mostly off screen, though, so you don't really see any of the, the violence. So if you're uh, looking for that, if you're looking for a movie uh, like I Spit on Your Grave or Revenge, you're not going to see that kind of stuff here. Uh, so this is more about the dramatic elements. And again, I thought it was a very nuanced performance from uh, Carrie Mulligan. And uh, to me, one of her best performances ever. Uh, I really like Bo Burnham in here too. Uh, I thought he did a really good job. But again, that was one of the things too. I thought it was a bit formulaic. As soon as you see his character, uh, you, you know how that's going to play out. Uh, a really good supporting cast here too. Uh, and yeah, that was the, one of the things that really stood out about this film for me was how they talk about, you know, assaults and stuff like that and how they deal with it because tragically it's truthful uh, and it's just mind blowing. I think of that swimmer uh, who was, you know, found guilty, but they gave him a slap on the wrist like probation. I think his father was a judge. I want to say the, uh, the kid's name was Brock something, but mind blowing in this day and age that he could essentially get away with something like that just... And they talk about, they say things similar uh, in this movie, like they've said in that case, the judge, I remember saying. Uh, so it was really shocking. It's basically all about her trying to serve out vengeance for people trying to take advantage of uh, women. And then uh, especially towards the end where she's trying to uh, get uh, vengeance for uh, her friend and uh, the people that were involved in that situation. And that plays out realistically, uh, what I think, uh, as far as you know, seeing what happens at uh, the climax. Although, post that one really dramatic scene, I feel like that is stuff that you also have to suspend disbelief with too. Uh, but I definitely love the cast here from top to bottom, the supporting cast. Again, uh, especially Carrie Mulligan, I thought she was amazing. I feel like she definitely should have won for Best Actress. And Promising Young Woman did win the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay. I think it deserved a little bit more Academy appreciation than what it got, uh, but it's nice to see that it did receive some uh, accolades. And again, there's certain aspects that I find uh, formulaic and that you have to suspend disbelief with, but I think, again, this is a movie that is so tragically truthful about how we talk about and how we deal with uh, assault like this. And then also, I, I think this is such a powerful film not just with the, the performance, but the message here. And I think everybody should watch this, especially, you know, kids growing up too, to uh, see how this can affect people and how things like this are dealt with. Um, just an amazing film, even though I have uh, some faults with it. Um, and then this is directed by Emerald uh, Fennell, who uh, is an actress, and she played uh, Camilla Parker Bowles in The Crown. Uh, this is her feature-length film directorial debut too. Both of these female-led female uh, feature length directorial debuts and both amazing. I can't wait to see uh, what they both do in the future. Uh, so yeah, I would definitely recommend checking this one out. Uh, I got this off of Amazon. Uh, it was 25 bucks. I haven't seen it go down in price, so I decided to get it. I definitely wanted to add it to the collection uh, from Universal right here. Some uh, good bonus features too. 
um, talking about uh, you know promising young vision, two sided transformation, balancing act, and then a feature length commentary with uh, writer director uh, Emerald Fennel. And next up is The Marksman. Uh, this is also from Universal. Uh, the first three right here are from Universal. This is a Liam Neeson action movie. So if you're a Liam Neeson fan, this is right up your alley. I feel like he's done a lot of action films recently that are average to below average. Maybe some paycheck movies. There was one recently I saw uh, where he was a bank robber and I can't remember the name of that one right now because it just wasn't worth remembering. <laughs> Uh, that one was definitely below average. And let me know your favorite Liam Neeson movie. I would say my top three. He's been around for a long time. He's done a ton of great movies. But uh, Dark Man, I remember that way back in the day. The Grey, which is such an amazing uh, survival thriller movie. And then also I really like uh, Walk Among the Tombstones, which I think is a very underrated. It's ever since Taken, he's done just a slew of action movies. Uh, unfortunately, not that many of them were very good. Uh, but this one to me is definitely one of the better uh, recent ones that I've seen from him. Um, he is a rancher uh, in Arizona on the border of Mexico. And um, this little kid right here, Miguel, him and his mother decide to flee Mexico because they're being chased by the cartel. His uncle took money from the cartel. Terrible idea right there. And so they're going to make a message and try to, you know, wipe out his family. So they're crossing over and that's when they come across Liam Neeson. And uh, he's a marksman right there. He can uh, used to be in uh, the war, Vietnam, and he's a Marine. He's got a tattoo. They talk about that in the film. So right away, though, he comes across them crossing over the, through the fence. And there's a confrontation right there with uh, some of the um, cartel and the henchmen. And there's a shootout, and Liam Neeson kills this guy's brother, who is a henchman for the cartel. So he's also out for revenge, as well as tracking... Uh, Miguel down because during the shootout the mother doesn't make it and Liam Neeson makes a promise to the mother to get little Miguel to uh, some family members in Chicago. So they're traveling from Arizona to Chicago. Uh, from there it's a chase uh, and you know it kind of shows the technology and how they you know utilize things and how powerful the cartel is and you know they're everywhere. They're in, in the U.S. and how uh, they can deal with uh, corruption and, uh, you know, government and things like that. Uh, he's dealing with his own trauma. I think this was a really fleshed out character, uh, you know, kind of really good backstory there. And that's one of the things that I, I thought shined here. A lot of times there's cardboard cutouts in these action movies. And that's not the case here. Uh, it's him and his dog uh, after he loses his wife. And he's dealing with uh, issues with the bank trying to take his land as well uh, and his, uh, you know, ranch. So he's dealing with all of that and now he's, uh, you know, being chased with, by the cartel and trying to get Miguel again to his family members. And, uh, you know, Miguel doesn't want to go with Liam Neeson at all. There's, you know, a lot of back and forth there. And, you know, that aspect is kind of formulaic. You see that in a lot of movies like this. Um, and uh, eventually, you know, they form a bond. And one thing I will warn people is there's a dog in here and you can tell, unfortunately, pretty quickly, you know, with the cartel, how that's going to play out. And, that's something that always, you know, bothers me in movies. When I see people getting, you know, shot and killed in movies, I'm just like, ah, they probably deserved it. But when an animal, especially, you know, a pet dog like that, uh, it definitely, you know, gets me right in the heart. I think of uh, the movie I Am Legend. That scene always gets me. So be forewarned about that scene. Um, but again, I think it's something, you know, I don't think that's a spoiler. You see it kind of coming pretty early on. You know, they're being chased by the cartel. It's Liam Neeson, his dog, and Miguel running from them. And, you know, there's chase sequences and shootouts and stuff like that, you kind of know what to uh, expect. Um, so again, you know, it's a, a really good action movie with a lot of dramatic elements here. And uh, I think the bond between him and the kid is really good. They go back and forth for a long portion of the movie. And then you, by the end, you really see how that formed and uh, it just felt authentic. And uh, I love the ending. I love how that played out. I appreciate, you know, uh, depressing movies but this movie is a mixture of a depressing ending and uplifting at the same time but I really love how they played it out uh, I thought it was a little bit more grounded in reality that way a lot of times it's just you have to suspend disbelief too much to get past for me uh, anyways and again I I don't like when they uh, this wasn't a cop-out at all and I don't like Hollywood endings and you know where it's just overly ridiculous and over the top uh, with uh, how things play out and, uh, you know, just unbelievable. I thought this was one of uh, Liam Neeson's better recent 
uh, action movie. So if you're a Liam Neeson fan, I would definitely recommend checking this one out. Again, a good mixture of the action and drama here. And uh, the lone bonus feature is The Making of the Marksman. And uh, this is directed by uh, Robert Lorenz, who actually uh, directed uh, Clint Eastwood in Trouble with the Curve. And uh, that was one thing I thought was interesting watching this movie. I was thinking to myself, I could picture Clint Eastwood doing this role. Uh, but Liam Neeson, I believe he's like 69 years old, still doing these movies, still doing a great job. Uh, again, a lot of the times the movies aren't that great, but his performances are always you know, uh, at a level where you can believe his character and he's doing a well enough job where, uh, you know, even if you're not that much of a fan of the movie, you can still appreciate his performance overall. And again, this one to me was uh, one of the better ones of uh, that ilk uh, for, you know, the action movies like that. He's done so many recently and uh, a lot of them were just rough to sit through a battle of attrition. This is not the case here though. A really good performance too um, from this guy. Uh, one of the the lead henchmen from the cartel. He was definitely menacing looking, and you don't you don't want to mess with him. But a uh, a great uh, showdown as well. This isn't a groundbreaking action film. You know what you're getting yourself into. It's a formulaic plot, but I think it works well on uh, all the levels here. So yeah, I would definitely check out uh, the Marksman if you're a Liam Neeson fan or an action movie fan. And last but not least is Judas and the Black Messiah. Uh, I thought this was a really interesting movie. I know about the Black Panthers, but I didn't know uh, a lot about this case in particular, uh, about Fred Hampton, who was uh, the leader of uh, the Black Panthers in uh, Chicago. And uh, he was only 21 when he was uh, killed. And that was kind of shocking. That was one issue I had with the movie when I found that out at the end. Um, Daniel Kaluuya, he's in his 30s, and I just, you can't picture him being young. He doesn't look like a, a kid. Um, so that was one issue. One other issue, just a slight issue I had, there was a scene in here where I just wish it was shot differently. It would have had more of an emotional impact where he was delivering a speech. I feel like if they did a close up instead of like a, you know, kind of panning away off to the side, um, it just would have delivered a, a more punch, dramatic punch. And Daniel Kaluuya was great as Fred Hampton, the leader of the Black Panther Party. I think he's an amazing actor. He was originally in uh, Queen and Slim. He was in Black Panther, Sicario. He was also in uh, a BBC miniseries uh, show called The Fades, which I absolutely love that. I wish it was on for longer. It was only one season. It was a you know fantasy horror uh, series, and uh, he was really good in that too. But I'm looking forward to seeing what he does in the future. And uh, he won uh, the Best Supporting Actor uh, Academy Awards uh, Oscar. Uh, his uh, speech, though, was a little much, uh, you know, thanking his parents. Uh, that was definitely uh, memorable for all the wrong reasons. And I actually think that Lakeith Stanfield should have won. I thought he had a more nuanced performance here, a more dramatic performance overall as uh, William O'Neill, who was uh, working with the FBI as an informant to infiltrate the Black Panthers and uh, he provided, um, you know, layouts to Fred Hampton's apartment, layouts to the Black Panther um, uh, headquarters as well. Uh, so he did a lot of, you know, devious things. They talked about on the special features here, too, how, you know, he was a rat and how he was this terrible person. But he was kind of put in between a rock and a hard place. He was caught uh, stealing cars and pretending to be an FBI agent. So uh, the FBI said, you either work with us or you go to jail for several years. Um, I know it, you know, he was an opportunist, uh, but how many people would, uh, you know, say, Hey, I'm just going to go to jail for, you know, six, seven years, call it a day. Or would you try to get your freedom and, you know, work with the FBI? Uh, maybe he didn't have to give as much information as, you know, many details, especially, you know, you know, a, a layout, you know, drawing a layout for his, uh, Fred Hampton's apartment. Also too, uh, there was one thing where I was kind of surprised about. I didn't realize it initially, and I think a lot of people probably missed it too. Little Rel is in one scene in this movie towards the end, and uh, he does something, and initially, um, Lakeith Stanfield's character is like, no, I don't want any part of that. Then the climax, though, you kind of uh, find out that he actually utilized that. Um, but I feel like they don't really show it happening, and uh, they talk about it more in the special features, and then, uh, you know, the implications there... Uh, but they don't really like show it happening in the movie. So I feel like the fact that they didn't do that, a lot of people didn't realize that he actually utilized what uh, Laurel gave him. And uh, that was interesting. But yeah, uh, they talk about, um, you know, the real people here involved. And they show Fred Hampton's uh, real wife and real son as well and how they're still working with the Black Panthers today. Um, I think this is very relevant still today with everything going on in the news. 
uh, social injustices. You know, we've come a long way, but we still have a long way to go. Uh, and also, um, you know, J. Edgar Hoover and the FBI working with uh, local police and, you know, trying to take down, uh, especially him, you know, he was an enigmatic character and, you know, driving force for the Black Panthers at that time. And, uh, you know, how they were just set on taking him down and essentially assassinating him because he was going to go back to jail. But they said that wasn't enough. People have been able to do things while in jail. I really like the whole cast in here, too. Uh, Jesse Plemons was really good as the FBI agent. And then Martin Sheen as J. Edgar Hoover. He was only in a few scenes, but uh, just the look of that was uh, really good for J. Edgar Hoover. Uh, essentially unrecognizable uh, as uh, Martin Sheen. And uh, Danny Kaluuya and Lakeith Stanfield were in the movie Get Out together. Also Lil Rel in there too. Lil Rel's best performance. He was the best best friend ever in Get Out. Uh, Danny Kaluuya was amazing in that movie. And you know, Lakeith Stanfield had a small role in that movie, but uh, just a very memorable one. To me, Get Out is one of the best modern horror movies and a all time horror classic now in my opinion. And this sheds more light on the social injustices and racial inequality of that time period. You know, again, the late 60s, early 70s and everything going on in the country in that time. And the government, you know, local police officers, to FBI agents all working together to take down members of the Black Panther Party, especially Fred Hampton, uh, who is going to be, you know, the driving force for them at that time period. And you see Lakeith Stanfield's character, uh, William O'Neill, and, you know, at some scenes he seems very conflicted. Uh, especially the climax. In other scenes, he seems more opportunistic. And, you know, he's given uh, a lot of money during that time period. They said it was equivalent to $200,000 today. Uh, so during that time period, uh, he received a lot of money. And he also received a gas station, uh, an actual business, so he could have, uh, you know, uh, an actual, you know, income after that and a legitimate business and uh yeah so he received a lot for what he did and obviously it definitely affected him as a person but he was able to live his life uh and you know spend time with his family uh which was something fred hampton didn't get a chance to do uh the special features they talk about how uh william o'neill uh he did his first interview uh, i think it was in 1989 so uh, you know this took place in the late 60s early 70s so for the long time, he didn't talk about what happened, and he did this uh, interview. And once that interview went live, that night, he committed suicide. Uh, so I thought that was uh, really interesting and, you know, tragic. Uh, he maybe didn't realize how much information that they were going to reveal. And then uh, once that was the case, I guess, you know, he couldn't live with what he did or maybe thinking that people would come for him. I'm not really sure, but... Uh, uh, really strong performances across the board. I, again, I really liked Lakeith Stanfield, uh, his performance a little bit more than Daniel Kaluuya's, but uh, both uh, amazing performances here. And uh, it's really tragic too. You, you think about everything that was going on here and there was a lot of just misguided hate too uh, on you know, both sides of the, uh, the party here. Um, you know, there's a scene where one of the Black Panthers, uh, you know, was killed the cop and he's... Uh, wounded himself and he's in the hospital and then he ends up passing away and they think police officers uh might have you know done him in while in the hospital but they don't actually show that or don't you know talk about that in depth and then another black panther goes around shooting police officers and i was just thinking like you know it's hard to root for i know there's you know terrible things happen uh but i don't you just can't blame every single police officer for that so that's one thing i just can't ever fully uh support or wrap my head around it. i know so that's one issue i have i still you know i have friends who are officers and uh, just what they're dealing with and you can't blame every single officer there's a lot of people that do uh, great work in community as officers so i don't know i want to believe in uh you know positivity and the good of of people in general so it's you know i, I see the story it's kind of hard to you know rally and support uh some of these characters in here given what they did uh, I know there was negative things happening uh, against them too uh, as a people during that time period. But again, really strong performances here, uh, an important message again, still relevant today and uh, really good special features here too. I really liked that at the end, uh, you know, Lakeith Stanfield talking about how much this performance took out of him and, you know, how he was doing this role that was, you know, this character who uh, was, you know, uh, essentially a Judas S character, somebody who uh, did a great betrayal to, uh, you know, this young guy coming up who was doing great things for the community, Fred Hampton, and, uh, you know, how that just really affected him, how traumatic it was to do that role and be in that character. And he kind of broke down at the end of filming. 
uh, and just to uh, to see his performance again, I definitely preferred his performance a little bit more. Uh, but strong performances uh, from both, uh, and again, those are the driving force for uh, the movie, in my opinion. Um, and again, I like the supporting cast a lot. Uh, I think it's uh, still an important movie uh, and an important watch uh, for any anybody. It's something that should be taught in uh, history classes uh, growing up. So uh, another really strong movie right here, nominated for uh, uh, Best Picture as well. It actually won two Academy Awards uh, for uh, Daniel Kaluuya for Best Supporting Actor and then as well Best Original Song performed by her. So those are the four movies right there. Uh, I would recommend all of these in fact uh that's a rare occurrence <laughs> especially in this day and age i feel like so many movies just you know getting uh released uh not a lot of fresh new ideas uh and you know just recycled ideas and things we've seen so many times before but uh i thought these were all really good films uh the marksman again it's nothing new conceptually there but if you're a Liam neeson fan an action fan i think you'll appreciate a good mixture of the drama elements in there too promising young woman Again, it's flawed and formulaic, but still the message is so strong. Great performance from Carrie Mulligan and a movie that I think everybody should watch, especially, you know, teens and uh, people in their 20s as well. In Land, which uh, Damien Bashir won uh, the Best Supporting Actor for the AARP Movies for Grown-Ups Award and uh, Robin Wright was nominated for uh, Best Actress as well for the AARP Movies for Grown-Ups Award. <laughs> So take that into consideration, you know, when you're thinking about watching this movie. Uh, and then Judas and the Black Messiah, uh, another important message movie. So there you go. I'd recommend all of these ones. Let me know if you've seen any of them and what you think of them. And let me know which one of these is your favorite. Uh, leave me those comments down below. And I hope everybody's doing well. Take care.